Hey, um, it might not feel like winter right now, but eventually colder weather will come knocking, and you need to be ready. And I guess your car does too. Yes, right? it absolutely has to be done, and it can be done in just a few simple steps. We want to make it easy for you today. That's where Eric Ryan with Honest One Car Care comes in. He's joining us this morning. Hey there, Eric. Walk us through what we need to know to get ready. Good morning. How are you? Good. So obviously, winter holidays coming up here. Um, we all have vehicles, and we need to know the proper ways to maintain the vehicles. Uh, both for convenience and for safety issues. So we're going to talk about a couple of things in a few different segments this morning. First thing we're going to talk about is your tires on your vehicle. Um, obviously, you all have vehicles. We all have tires on them. It's proper to maintain. Make sure that we maintain the proper pressure in our tires for two reasons. One, um, a lot of cars for the last few years now it's mandated by the government. You have to have tire pressure monitors on them. But you need to make sure that those tire pressures are set at the correct level and not reset to uh, incorrect levels because it'll only monitor the reference of each one to each other. The, the, tri the tread depth on the tire, Obviously, being the winter months here, we want to make sure you have adequate tread depth. A recent study found one in eight people are driving on ball tires. That's extremely dangerous for summer months and especially in winter months. All tires now have these little indicators at what is two thirty seconds on the tire. You need to make sure that your tread depth is definitely above that as you're driving to make sure that um, you're not going to be cause yourself to spin out, something like that. If you do hit some ice and some snow here coming up in the winter months. Hey, um, Eric. So really can you do the? Yeah. You can do the penny test That's for that, I right? I mean, is that exactly. still an okay you know, test? Yeah, you got the penny test. Um, you know, for state inspection for North Carolina, it has to hit 230 seconds. So if you put the penny down there, and you're looking to see that when you put the penny in the middle of the tread depth that the tire comes to the top of, uh, of his head there, Abe Lincoln's head on that. That's a good indication of it, but also you can just swing by um, an, automotive do or an automotive shop, you know, like ours here at Honest One, and just have us check it out as well and make sure that your tires and everything are in proper condition. There's no treads or wear bars starting to come through, something like that. Um, you want to make sure for sure that you have safe tires on your vehicle this time of year. Hey, what about the uh, gas tank? Should we keep that filled during yeah. the winter months? Is that, is that a myth? For a few reasons, you know, in a way, a lot of people said in the old days, you gotta have gas in your gas tank because it keeps the pressure on there and it uses more gas when it's at a lower level. That's not really true these days with everything being so technological, but in a lot of ways it is important. One, for convenience. You don't want to get stuck. You don't want to get stranded. If you're out, in the, out and you get, for some reason, you break down the side of the road and there's nobody around and you have to run your vehicle to get heat in the car, you want to make sure your car has gas at the proper level for that reason. Secondly, it is true that if you keep a gas at a low level, it'll cause condensation in that tank, and that condensation creates water, which can then go in the fuel lines, and those fuel lines can freeze, and then that can cause you to have another problem as well. So just keep your tank full. It'll help you out in all and Absolutely. All, cases. all right, and yeah. we'll put uh, some of Eric's tips up on digtriad.com. Yeah, we'll uh, check in with you throughout the morning. I love these tips. I do, too. I don't this, think you can hear them enough. And I, you know, I had an accident last year, the only snow we had, and I had an accident, I and remember. so I was trapped out in the car for a while. It's like, you better have enough gas to yeah. keep warm, you know? Wow. All right. Well, it doesn't feel like winter, but trust me, it's coming, and you've got to be ready, especially on the road. The last thing you want is to be stranded in the cold. Eric Ryan with Honest One Auto has some quick tips that'll help you get your car winter ready. Okay, Eric, so you mentioned in our last segment the gas tank should be full, but you're not going to be in trouble if you have a half tank, right? Yeah, um, you know, you want to keep as much fuel as you can in there. Um, try to keep it above a certain level, just like we said, for two reasons. One, you don't want to get stranded. You want to be able to keep the heat going in your vehicle if you do get broken down on the side of the road. And secondly, to keep the condensation down. You know, we all have been there. We've all put $5 in the gas tank, you know, just to keep it up. But in the winter months, for sure, it's the same amount of money. Try to keep it as full as you can. Uh, one other thing I want to talk about as well is obviously your preparation for your windshield. Um, it's really important always keep a, a scraper in your windshield. We've all come out, it's frosted in the morning. You're sitting there trying to scrape it with a CD case or you can find. Keep a scraper in there, scrape your windshield real, real well. Leave your windshield wipers up at night as well. You know it's going to be freezing the next morning. Put your windshield wipers up, that way they don't get stuck down here in the cowl. Scrape your windshield up really good before you start running your wipers. You've all, we've all run our wipers and they start bouncing across the ice and banging up. That's just tearing your wiper blades up. So make sure you have good wiper blades on there. Uh, here at Austin, we cover, cover or carry a couple different designs, including these new pink ones we got for breast cancer awareness. That's what we've got in our shuttle vehicle here. Make sure those wipers are good condition, otherwise you're gonna, you're gonna tear it up, they're gonna get torn up when they go across the ice, or they're not gonna do their job as well. So One how, other thing often, you need to do, how often do you need to replace your wiper arms? Your wiper blades, you know, the arms themselves are fairly fine, but the wiper blades, you need to have them checked. What goes bad, obviously, is the rubber here on the blades. Mm -hmm. If you see them start coming apart, obviously they're bad at that point. But just swing by here, come by like Auto Swan or a different automotive shop that you might use, and just have them check the blades out and make sure they're in good condition. If you turn your wiper blades off and they bounce across the window when, mm -hmm. it's, when it's dry or when it's wet, that's a sign that the rubber's starting to get hard and it's time for you to replace the blades at that time. Okay, and you had another tip you were going to uh, tell me about. 
Yeah, it's real important. Uh, you know, fluids, when it's getting cold outside, you know, there's two aspects of winter maintenance. One is convenience, one is safety. Uh, it's important for your, your cooling system especially. You need to make sure that you have proper coolant in there, antifreeze, and it's been flushed recently. You know, all manufacturers recommend re re flushing your uh, antifreeze, your coolant, every two or three years or so. You need to make sure it's got the proper mix of antifreeze to water in there. One, so it doesn't freeze in the winter. Secondly, you need to keep the operating the proper temperature because that's what controls the heat in your vehicle. So if you're not getting the proper coolant or your thermostat's stuck open or something like that, your engine's not going to heat up properly and it's not going to get the hot air inside the car that you need. And you might run the risk of, uh, of getting a crack or freezing that, that water that's in your lines if you don't have that proper mix in there. All right, Eric, thank you for showing me around the car this morning. I like it. Those are some good All tips. Right. ...on digtriad.com, and I know producer Sierra is mm -hmm. very disappointed. She yeah. can't win <laughs> She's them. not the only one. Lots I would have wrestled them out of her hands if she yeah. got them, but we can't win. Tomorrow, <laughs> 7 o'clock, tune in. Yeah, the phones are going to be ringing. Uh, yeah, I'm phone. worried they'll start ringing now, so it's tomorrow, mm -hmm. not today. you got to wait yeah. for the signal. And we won't give you the number to call until then. There you go. That's right. Okay, uh, let's talk about this. Growing up, you remember, we could all change a tire. <laughs> then that number started to dwindle a little bit, and people started calling other people to do it. If you don't know what you're doing, you can actually do more harm than good. Yeah, that's right. Eric Ryan with Honest One Car Care is showing us the right way to change a tire this morning. Hi, Eric. Walk us through it. How are you? All right, fantastic. Um, a couple things on changing a tire. Uh, one thing you need to make sure is that you have a spare tire that actually has air in it before you can change it. A lot of people, <laughs> we have cars coming here to Honest One Auto Care. And the tires are completely empty for spare tires, or they don't have a spare tire at all. They went to put one on, they found they don't have one. So know where your spare tire is. On, your, on this vehicle, for instance, it's here in the back, underneath this cover in the back. Same location is where you'll find your jack and your kit that's going to come with the tools. All cars should have an owner's manual. Look in your owner's manual. It'll tell you where the spare tire should be, what the tire pressure should be set at. These spare tires get set at a lot higher tire pressure, almost 80 PSI on this one. And where your tools will be. They'll also walk you through how to use your tools. Uh, traditionally, you'll have a jack here. You'll have a kit that's going to have a lug nut tool and some tools to adjust the jack up and down. Each one's a little bit different. If you're not sure exactly how the systems work, um, you can come by here at Honest One Auto Care. We'll look through your system for you and see exactly what it's gonna, how it's going to work. Usually, though, obviously, you're going to have lug nuts on your vehicle here. What you're going to do is you're going to loosen them up. You're going to crack them loose while the tire's still on the ground so the tire doesn't spin on you. And then your car and your vehicle and your owner's manual will tell you exactly where to put that jack on the vehicle. You'll raise it up, be able to take your tire off and get it changed that time. Another thing to consider, though, is most new vehicles today, like this one here, come with free roadside assistance. You have AAA as well. Uh, Honest One Auto Care, all of our customers here get free, free roadside assistance for a year. So you know where that number is. A lot of times it's on the window of this, uh, on, the, on the window, on your side window of your vehicle. It's going to have a phone number on there. You can actually call them. If we're outside this, these days when it's cold outside, it might be in a storm or something like that, and you've got kids in the car, you simply do not want to be out there on a dangerous road with there's ice and such, call that number, know where it's at, have the roadside assistance come take care of it for you. Eric, a quick the, question for you, just real yeah. quick. Um, the jack is probably the most important thing, is if you don't get that in the right spot, it could fall off and you could get hurt badly. So, Ex I mean, that's exactly. the key, right? Exactly. You need to read your owner's manual. If you are not comfortable with how to work it, how the system works exactly, bring it by here to Honest Model Care. We'll make sure all your parts are there and make sure okay. you know exactly what to do, when to break the vehicle and such, and where to make sure it's not going to roll on you as well. Thanks so much, Eric. We appreciate your time. That's good advice. Right oh, yeah, there. absolutely. Definitely. All right, before we get to the Reese, let's talk about your car for a minute. What is in your trunk? Maybe some golf clubs, a spare tire. But do you have an emergency kit? Eric Grind with Honest One Auto says you need one. All right, I admit I've got the golf clubs, but no emergency kit. Don't yell at me, but tell me what I would need. <laughs> I heard y'all joking a second ago about having candy bars in your emergency kit. That's actually not a bad idea. You know, when we think about emergency kits, we think of the basics, you know, maybe some flares, flashlights, jumper cables, things like that. All those things are important, but it's also important to remember the things that put yourself in that worst case scenario for a survival situation if you get stranded on the side of the road. You're going to want some snacks, you're going to want a bottle of water. If you need a good flashlight, have a tire pressure gauge is there is kind of one of those secondary things to check. But look for the survival things as, as well. You know, chances are when you get stuck on the side of the road, you're going to have people around you, but plan for that worst case scenario. Have a blanket in the car, some things like that. You can buy prepackaged stuff, um, you know, these uh, the kits, the uh, the emergency kits at places, you know, auto repair stores, places like that. Um, but also, you know, they're not going to have like those bigger items of the ones I'm really talking about. So make sure you got the food and the drinks and the water and a blanket in there. Like I said, plan for worst case scenario. One other thing we're talking about in addition to the emergency kit is making sure that your fluids, you're up to date on your fluids, oil changes and such. You know, those different weights you hear, the 10, 30, 20, 50, those actually mean something when you're checking oil. So you want to make sure you have the right type of oil in your vehicle. For the type of the right type of the uh, the season, you know the winter holidays at this point. So bring it to your auto repair shop, take it to the honest one here, uh, and with the house check the door for you. Make sure it's not uh, too far past due. 
If your oil is getting old and dirty, it's getting sludgy, that's going to make it thicker, it's going to build up more pressure, it might not make it operate correctly, and it might make it harder starting in the morning. Going in line with the hard starting in the morning, you've got to make sure your battery here and your alternator and your charging system are correct. It's not just about voltage, it's about the amperage. And that's why when you see a battery, it says 500, 600, cold cranking amp, something like that. It needs to be properly tested with a load put on that battery. Tons of batteries will test good on voltage, but when you put a load on them, they won't work at all. And we'll swing by here to Honest One Auto Care. We'll put a charging test on. We'll test your alternator, your starter, and battery. Put a load on that battery and see if the amperage is there. The last thing you want at this time of year is to get up in the morning, start your car, and your battery's dead. And you got to think about what to do at that point. So make sure all those little systems are checked out. Bring it by. Let us do a good complimentary inspection on it. Make sure everything is all set for you for the winter so you can get through these next couple of months without having any hiccups for you. Yeah, you hope not. Awesome tips, Eric. Let me ask you real quick. If there's one yeah. mistake you see people make over and over in the cold weather, what would you say it is? With their I cars. would say it'd be people who just because they have all-wheel drive or four-wheel drive thinks that means that they can drive faster in the snow or the ice. It's important that no matter the situation, we're always being proactive. We're always taking our time, planning the steps ahead of us. We don't want to be a danger to ourselves, our family, or to those around us. Play it safe. Make sure your vehicle is in the proper maintenance and has been uh, you know, maintained to its standards, that everything is in the correct uh, operating order at this time. Let somebody check it out. Make sure you're all set to go. You have nothing to worry about. All right. Thank you so much, Eric Ryan. I'm going to work on my emergency kit soon. I promise. Thanks for your time this morning. You're welcome. And he really did have some awesome tips for us today. You can check them all out later this morning on digtry.com.